So this is the second video about Laplace's equation, so if you haven't seen the first one, you might get a bit lost. I recommend you go and watch. We were up to the point where we were trying to solve Laplace's on equation on a square in the specific case where the boundary conditions were sine pi y along this vertical line, um, zero along this horizontal line, zero along this vertical line, and along the top we had e to the x minus x times e minus 1 minus 1. So these were some particular boundary conditions uh, we'd picked uh, and then modified in order to ensure that the values of the boundary conditions at the corners all vanished. And the reason we did that was to split the, the problem into two. So the two problems we now want to solve are 0, 0, 0 sine pi y We'll call that one theta 2, because this was boundary condition number 2. Um, and the other one is 0, 0, 0, and then e to the x minus x, e minus 1, minus 1. And this is theta 3, because this was boundary number 3. So our solution theta will be the sum of these two. And the goal is to express theta 2 and theta 3 as sums of separated solutions. So what are the separated solutions? Let me just remind you. The separated solutions are of the form x times y where x is a function of little x and it's one of these three forms. It's either a sum of sines and coses, it's, or it's linear plus a constant, or it's a sinh plus a cosh, depending on the sine of this constant lambda. And y is either a sum of sinches and coshes, if lambda is negative, or something linear plus a constant, or a sum of sines and coses. So these, these are the possibilities, and I want to remind you we've already used the lambda equals zero solutions in order to modify the solution so that it vanishes at the corners. So let's take each of these two cases in turn, theta two and theta three, and see which of the separated solutions are relevant. So for theta two, um, we note that theta 2 of x comma 0 so along this um, this bottom axis here this vanishes as does theta 2 of x comma 1 but what and that's along the top and what does this mean well this means that x of x times y of 0 vanishes for all x and x of x times y of 1 vanishes for all x. But if x is not going to be 0, this implies that y of 0 equals 0 and y of 1 equals 0. So this y, this separated solution y that we're looking for, um, is going to have to vanish at 0 and at 1. So, okay, I've written something slightly wrong here. Remember, we want theta 2 to be a sum of separated solutions, not just one separated solution, but if we put a sum here, this is still going to imply that all of the, well, we, we want all of the y of zeros to vanish at zero. That's going to be the simplest possible thing, similarly here. So when does a separated solution vanish at zero and at one? Well, let's have another look at the separated solutions. They have these three forms. Certainly a linear plus a constant, the graph of that is going to look something like this. So this is C Y plus D. And that's clearly only going to vanish at one point. Or possibly it will vanish everywhere if, if C and D are both zero. But we don't want that as a one of our solutions. That's trivial. So this is no good. It doesn't vanish at the two points, 0 and 1, only vanishes once. Um, C 
similarly, if we take C Psych Py plus D Cosh Py and say it vanishes at Y1 and at Y2, then, well, I want to show that Y1 equals Y2 so that it only vanishes once, at most once. So if it vanishes at both of these places, cosh never vanishes because the graph looks like this. So we can divide through by cosh and we get C tanch PY1 equals minus D. From this first equation and from the second equation we get minus D equals C tanch PY2. But tanch is injective, so this means that Y1 equals Y2. So it can only vanish at one point. In other words, the only separated solutions that satisfy these boundary conditions are sines and cosses. So um, C sine px plus d, sorry, it's y, not yx, plus d cos py. Right. Um, furthermore, we can we can deduce a bit more. So if we stick zero into into here, then c times sine of zero is zero. <coughs> so in other words, y of zero equals zero plus d times cos of zero, which is just d. That's d, and this is supposed to be equal to zero. So that tells us that d equals zero. Similarly, at y equals one. We get c times sine p times 1 plus d, well d vanishes, so this is supposed to be equal to 0 as well. And unless c is going to be equal to 0, this means that sine p vanishes, which implies that p is n times pi for some integer n. So the separated solutions we're really interested in for theta 2 are, well, zooming back up to the top, they're these, th these third kind of solutions here, where y is a sum of sines and coses and x is a sum of sinch and cosh. So let me write out the solution down here. So we want um, a, and a is going to depend on n, n is integer times sinh n pi x plus b n cosh of n pi x just substituting p equals n pi into the separated solution and then times c n which i'm going to absorb into the a and the b's it's just a constant times sine n pi y so that's a separated solution remember we want to take a linear combination of separated solutions so let's stick a sum in front of it, and this is going to be our theta 2. We haven't quite determined it yet because we want to know what a n and b n are. Um, so to find a n and b n, that's our next, next goal. So we have used exactly two of the boundary conditions. We've used this one and we've used this one. We have to use the fact that on boundary condition 2 we're equal to sine pi y on boundary condition 4 we're equal to 0. So let's use this vanishing boundary first because that, that sounds a bit simpler. So when x equals 1 what do we get? Well um, theta 2 of 1 comma y equals sum of a n times sinh of n pi when x is 1 uh, plus b n times cosh of n pi times sine n pi y and this is supposed to be equal to 0 right but now this these are just constants here so this is really a Fourier expansion of zero. A Fourier series. 
but the Fourier series of zero is clearly zero. So that means that all of these constants have to vanish. So that means a n, well, times sinh n pi equals minus b n times cosh n pi. In other words, if we know what b n is, we can work out a n and vice versa. Then we also have when x equals 0. So when x equals 0, we know theta 2 of 0, comma y is this function sine pi y. But it's also equal to this expression, sum of a n times sinh of 0, so actually that vanishes, plus b n times cosh of 0. Well, cosh of 0 is 1, so let's just ignore that times sine n pi y equals, well, equals sine pi y. This is the boundary condition we're trying to match. So from this, we're going to determine b n, and then we're going to use this formula to determine a n. Um, so how do we determine b n? Well, this is, again, a Fourier series. Everything from here on is going to be just Fourier series. And the Fourier series of sine pi y is just sine pi y, so this means that b1 equals 1 and bn equals 0 if n is not equal to 1. Okay, because then if you just substitute those two in, you certainly get sine pi y on this side. Okay, and that implies that a1 equals um, minus b1 times cosh pi over sinh pi and all the other a's vanish so in summary our, th our function phi our theta 2 is the sum well it is a sum, but actually most of the terms vanish, right, because bn and an are zero, so let's just ignore the sum and just write the terms. Um, a1 times sinh pi x plus b1 times cosh pi x times sine pi y, and then from the above, this is just um, cosh pi x minus sinh pi x times cosh pi over sinh pi. All times sine pi y. So this, this determines this function theta 2. So the next goal will be to determine theta 3. Um, and the reason I did this one first was because the Fourier series of sine is particularly simple, right? It's just sine. So remember, theta 3, we're going to have to take the Fourier series of this function, e to the x minus x, e minus 1, e minus 1. And that's what I'll do in the next video.